Hi everybody, Griff here again. So if you're using Adobe Character Animator, you might notice that when you animate your head, you kind of get this behavior, right? Well, I got this cool tip from someone on Twitter, this guy right here, and uh, what it's gonna let you do is that when you tilt your head, it's gonna free that up from the body. And to achieve this, we're gonna completely abuse Adobe Character Animator's face behavior. So in this video, I'm gonna run you through how that works, and then we're gonna move on and show you other ways that I've been able to do really horrible things with the face behavior, and uh, kinda give you some insight into other ways you might be able to hack Adobe Character Animator to get the behaviors that you're looking for, so stay tuned for that. All right, everybody, so this is the Will Smith as a cherub puppet that I made for Valentine's Day. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have made uh, the genie, as that is currently very hot. That's hot. Okay, so let's take a look at how I set this thing up. Now, if we tilt our head, we'll see that the head remains somewhat autonomous. Whereas when we're moving our body, uh, you get that traditional behavior that you're probably used to. Now, all these values can be edited, of course. So if we go over here into our uh, behavior panel, uh, we'll find a face behavior that I, I called um, face movement. And that one is indicating like how much the torso moves whenever I move my head. And we can crank this down here to almost nothing if we want to, which is kind of like where I like it, honestly. Um, and then we can look at the head tilt. And based on the tilt behavior, uh, we could get the uh, you know the, the torso to, to tilt a little bit as well at the top. Um, and then we get the head a little more free here with the head tilts. So let's jump into the puppet panel and just see how I set this up. Okay, so here we have our head target. And what I did is I marked this as head. And if you look at this mesh here, what happened is it got, it got joined up with the rest of the torso. Um, because it is not marked independent. So we can then move that head pivot up to where we expect the pivot to be, and the whole head will uh, tilt from that position. If we look at our face stuff group, that is also marked as a head. Um, and then looking at these values, what we did is cranked up that head tilt pretty high, and then the rest of your face is also controlled here, like your eyelid strength, all that good stuff. Uh, the head position strength, however, I turned all the way down. And that's because we just want this channel to control the tilt, not the position. But if we look at the head target, uh, it doesn't have a face behavior, right? So how are we determining how much the torso moves? Well, the cool thing is we can go up one group, and whatever behaviors are applied to that group uh, trickle down to the children unless otherwise specified by another behavior. So this fly group has its own face behavior. And here, I just turned the head position strength up to about 60, but you can play with this however you like. Head tilt, I tend to keep pretty low in this area. And then everything else I set to zero. I did this because I'm not sure how often Adobe Character Animator tries to interpret these values, so I figure if they're set to zero, I might get better performance. Since this head target has become part of the body, if we go up to this face stuff group, we can set the attach style to hinge, and we can have it attached to the head target. And there we go, that's pretty much it. Now you have your head target actually deforming the torso when you move. The face stuff is uh, independent of that, and the tilt is completely controlled by a new face behavior. Okay, so as promised, now I'm gonna move on to how do we make this character fly? All right, so before I jump into this, let me give you a little bit of context. I have been uh, trying to do some streaming on Twitch, and there's a whole group of people doing this, actually. I used to check out Kazler, Scribs. You know what? I'll just leave a whole list of names in the comments below. Uh, go check them out. It's really cool. And for someone like myself, who has always had sort of a natural anxiety of, of appearing on a camera, uh, this is great because I can play this character, and I really think it just adds a lot to like the whole... Uh, show of streaming games. This is my character. You can come check him out on Twitch at Griffin Moore. Mostly I make art and I make puppets like this. So if you're interested in character animator, please stop by, uh, share some knowledge with me, maybe pick up some, some new tips and tricks, and uh, generally just hang out and listen to cool music.
when I get fun with it, I can start thinking cartoony bird. Which means I gotta give him some head. <laughs> that. <clears throat> yeah, that came out Turn wrong. Turn everybody on. Wrong. Not like that, but in a different way. Like where the visibility is just on. I'm not trying to be weird. Okay, so as you see here, Griff can fly around the screen just based on my movement. So if I'm standing here doing my thing, it really kind of fixes the issue of like needing to control the character with a keyboard. And that's kind of my goal is I just want to stay away from any sort of MIDI input devices as much as possible. And then eventually, you know, integrate those uh, for special things. So here we have Griff moving around. He's flying, he's blinking, he's raising his eyebrows, talking, flapping his wings. I got a little bit of physics here on this hand, so we get some dangle, all that kind of good stuff. And I can even transform his pose so that he'll go and sit down on a cloud, uh, which, you know, makes it a little bit easier to keep him under control if I'm really jumping around playing Call of Duty or something. So here's the thing about Adobe Character Animator. You can really add these behaviors to anything you want to, as long as it makes sense. So here we have that face behavior controlling the head tilt and that little bit of body movement. But the really cool thing is that I can add more of these to get this character flying. So let's jump into the rig panel again and take a look. All right, so here in the rig panel, I'm going to take this highest level group called Will. And I'm going to apply a new face behavior to that. There we go. We also want to make sure we mark Will as, face, as, as a face so that the behavior applies. And if we take a look at these... Uh, properties here, we're pretty much not going to need any of this like eyebrow stuff, eyelid stuff. So I'll just set these to zero again. All right, so here we have Will Smith. He's now flying around when I move my head. And this is pretty cool, but you'll probably want to get this a little more under control, especially if you're going to be playing games and you're going to be moving around a lot, uh, you know, playing the Call of Duty. So what we're going to do is take a look at this new face behavior I set up called Will. Now you can set some pose to pose movement on this and get more of a snappy thing. But what I found works pretty well is if I just crank that smoothing the whole way up. And now it doesn't much matter what I do. It really just eases in and out of the different poses and makes the whole thing really nice and mellow here. And we can also go ahead and turn off some of that head tilt strength uh, just so he doesn't, you know, tilt around quite as much. Uh, you can leave the scale on and you'll get, uh, you know, the entire character scaling. And here it's just a, a game of like sort of balancing out the different face behaviors to get the look you're going for. Because you'll see his head will scale independently of the body, um, all that kind of stuff. So it's just like, it's all a preference from here. But there you go. Now you got a cool flying character. And one of the things I did was I went in and I just made sure that my legs were uh, set to hinge, right? And that will make sure that uh, they just kind of, you know, stay in position a little bit better as you're tilting the body around. And then I added a nice little uh, flappy wing animation. And then, you know, you can still use your dragger handles and everything else as you normally would. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful. If you use this setup on any of your puppets, please Go ahead and ping me. I'd love to see what you're doing. You can find all of my links in the description below. And also feel free uh, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment to tell me how awesome I am for showing you this. And please stop by my Twitch channel. Come hang out with me, listen to some music. Give me somebody to talk to. I'm lonely and I'm getting really close to affiliate status, uh, which is going to let me use the Adobe Character Animator add-ons in Twitch, which will let uh, viewers uh, trigger actions on the puppet or trigger other animations and I have all kinds of cool ideas for that And so I'm working really hard towards getting that set up. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time Oh, that's hot That's hot <laughs>